Today I want to talk about an illustration that I'm calling Four Doors and One Heart. The idea for this illustration originates with a friend of mine named Joseph. So Joe, I just want to give you credit. I hope you don't mind my adaptations. The main question behind this illustration is what motivates men and women to follow you as a disciple maker. Now, every illustration has its weaknesses, so we're not going to try to make this thing stand on all fours, but I think it will drive the point home. There are four doors, lesser motivations, and one heart, the supreme motivation that helps men and women decide on whether or not they want to follow us. The first motivation is relationship. People just want to be with you because you love them. Love is a powerful motivator. In fact, I would say it's one of the best motivations besides the heart motivation. We'll talk about that in the end. I think of Jesus in John 13, 34, and 35. He says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The reason this is a new command is that Jesus makes an amendment to the old command. The old was, love one another the way you want to be loved, Mark 12, 31. Now Jesus is saying, love one another the way I loved you. The bar just got significantly higher. Jesus' men had no doubt that he loved them. That was a strong motivation to follow him. Another reason why someone may be motivated to follow you is your proficiency. Maybe you're a good teacher or you really have a good handle on the scriptures, or you ask great questions or share the gospel in powerful ways. Maybe it's your family life or your marriage. Maybe it's the way that you conduct yourself at work as a follower of Jesus. Or maybe you're a prayer warrior. There are so many skills that people really admire and they are looking for coaches to help them become more proficient in their walk with Jesus. They want you to show them the way. I think of Jesus calling his men to follow him. In Matthew 4, 19, he said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Nobody knows a better way to fish for men than Jesus, and his disciples became exactly what he promised. People will look to you because you're proficient. Sometimes it's the fruit that people see in your life. The fruit motivates them to seek you out as a disciple maker. This can be fruit of people's transformed lives or the fruit of the Spirit. They want to be fruitful just like you. It seems like your life consists more of substance rather than just theory. Your actions speak louder than words, and your life and the lives of those who lead is the proof in the pudding. People are looking for guidance and coaching to make their lives count for something. They want to imitate you, learn from you, follow you. In Matthew 12, 33, Jesus says, You'll know a tree by its fruit. 
How many of the disciples saw the throngs of people following Jesus and said to themselves, I want to have an impact like that? Certainly, it is that kind of man or woman Jesus is looking for. He proves that by giving us the Holy Spirit and the Great Commission. The last door is vision. You have the ability to inspire people. You lift up their eyes not only to see what is, but to see what could be. This is not the vision of a politician or businessman or sports celebrity. This is the vision of God. It's extracted from the very Word of God. The inspiration that you provide sets their hearts aflame. You know how to throw gas on the fire. People like being around you because you're a believer a person of great faith. You tend to believe in the people that you are leading. When people lose their way, you help them refocus, refit, redirect, and re-engage in things that really matter. Steve Smith, our friend who just passed into eternity, remind us that Jesus was a master vision caster. In Matthew 24, 14, he says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Jesus was looking to a time in history showing us the end state. We will reach the nations with the gospel spreading the love of God throughout the entire earth. Now that's a vision that will inspire the people of God to follow you. People may enter our lives through these four doors, but that's only the beginning of the journey. Let's seize the ultimate motivation. As they step into the sanctuary of our lives, they find the heart of our motivation, an unwavering love for God. It's what fueled the other elements that they admire so much from the outside, and it's our job to guide them into this deeper motivation from the inside. We need to show them our love for God is only a reflection of Jesus' love for the Father, but so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. John 14, 31. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. John 15, 10. Jesus' love for the Father was unmistakable, and I believe that in the end, this is what the disciples admired most about Jesus. He loved the Father, and therefore, he had the Father's heart. This is our aim as disciple-makers, to capture it ourselves and to pass it on to others. If we capture this, we will certainly open the four doors as well.